Hi, this is Richard Barrett for Guitarist Magazine, and I'm here today to show you the Epiphone Les Paul Custom Access. That is the Alex Lifeson signature model of Epiphone. It's the latest in this series. More recently, there was a Les Paul Standard version of it, and of course, there are the Gibson Custom Shop versions as well. I'm not going to do a comparison, but I do want to talk you through the features of this particular guitar. So, in the broadest terms, we have mahogany neck, mahogany body with a maple veneer, and this is a quilted quadruple A maple veneer. And the neck is set into the body via this sculpted joint, which allows easier access to the high frets. And while I have the guitar flipped over, you can see that we have the usual inspection plates, plus the access to the springs for the Floyd Rose vibrato. Going back to the neck for a minute, this is a slim profile. It's called rounded, and it's a very comfortable slim neck, but nevertheless, it is quite small, and I wonder if it might hark back to Alex's Gibson 355, which I know had a small neck. Anyway, we have the new headstock design, Grover tuners, the locking nut for the Floyd Rose, 12 inch radius, of course, because we're looking at Gibson spec here, a bound ebony 22 fret board, and those frets are medium jumbo. And everything, I must say, is finished beautifully. The fretwork and everything is, is really lovely on this guitar, as good as any I've seen. Looking at the electronics, we have the standard Gibson type layout, three position toggle, doing the usual job, two volume, two tone for bridge and neck pickups. The pickups themselves are an Epiphone Pro Bucker 3 in the bridge, that's an Alnico magnet, and a ceramic pro in the neck. Traditionally speaking, a ceramic magnet gives a slightly tighter, harder sound than an Alnico, and so that makes it quite a good choice for the neck position, and we'll obviously have a listen to that in a minute. But before we do, I'd like to talk you through some of the push-pull switches that we have. Three of these pots have them. Um, if we have a quick listen to the bridge pick up in its full fat mode, that's plugged into the studio AC15 as usual. There's a little bit of what I might call hair on the sound, but you get an idea of what it would be like completely clean as well. Now if I pull up this pot and the knob does actually have a slight lip on the top that enables me to pull it up without slipping, which is a nice touch. Here's the single coil. As you'll appreciate, there is a volume drop because we're pretty much halving the output. We have the same feature on the neck pickup. Even though that's ceramic, it's pretty full bodied. So either or, or both, and let's just have a listen to the middle position. That's both single coil and both humbucking. Now, on the neck tone control, there's the third switch, and that is a phase switch, which reverses the polarity of one of these pickups. I can't remember which. It doesn't matter, really, because this only works with both of them on. So that's the Peter Green type. Again, that to me harks back a little bit to the six position tone select you would get on a Gibson 355, where one of the sounds would be quite pinched like that. So it doesn't surprise me that Alex Lifeson might like that. So there we have the basic palette of sounds that's available with a, with a clean tone. Um, to, to wrap up, you'll see that we've got the standard um, line up a fine tuners and locking nut and the plug-in tensionable arm that you get on a Floyd Rose. This all works extremely well. The finishing is to a really high standard. If there's one thing that I might say about this that I would change is I would have liked maybe a slightly narrower spaced nut. I have to try not to push the bottom E off that. Maybe that's just me, but I'm pointing that out anyway. Now I've made a track that um, is a kind of tribute to the idea of Rush and some of the sounds that Alex used through his career, uh, which obviously this is optimised for. So I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> 